What if I told you that, like this seesaw, nature is reaching a critical tipping point much faster than we ever anticipated, and we are living on the very edge of an existential crisis. Picture yourself and a friend, perfectly balanced on each end. You shift forward a little, then a little more, until slowly the seesaw begins to tip, momentum takes over, and your friend plummets to the ground. Nature, too, is hanging in the balance. Every day, delicate ecosystems are being pushed to their tipping point by our continued and unprecedented destruction of nature. Our planet's fragile seesaw is creaking and wobbling, and if we continue on this path of destruction, the impacts will be catastrophic and irreversible. This won't just be an environmental issue, it will affect everyone, everywhere. And vulnerable communities who have contributed the least to this crisis will suffer the most. So what's pushing us towards these tipping points? What's at stake? And how can we turn things around before it's too late? Nature is remarkably resilient, but it isn't invincible. Human actions have already altered around three-quarters of our planet's land surface and two-thirds of marine environments. The Living Planet report shows that the average size of vertebrate wildlife populations has plummeted by 73% since 1970, and over a million plant and animal species are at risk of extinction. Continued pressure will cause ecosystems to collapse, setting off a disastrous domino effect. This will cascade into our societies, magnifying economic stresses, food insecurity, political tensions, and social inequalities, just as we witnessed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's look at one example. The Amazon rainforest holds over 10% of the Earth's terrestrial biodiversity and 10% of all known fish species. It's also home to over 47 million people, including 2.2 million indigenous inhabitants whose cultures and livelihoods are deeply connected to nature and rely on the sustainable use of its resources. The Amazon is also a crucial ally against the climate crisis. Storing 250 to 300 billion tons of carbon, the equivalent of 15 to 20 years of global greenhouse gas emissions. And through transpiration, the process by which plants release water in the form of water vapor, it also contributes up to half of the regional rainfall, making it resilient to drought. Talk about an impressive resume. But this balance is fragile. Decades of deforestation and forest degradation, driven by the expansion of cattle ranching and agriculture, compounded by our climate crisis, have weakened the Amazon's resilience. With fewer trees, there's less transpiration, which leads to a decrease in rainfall. Longer, hotter, drier conditions then degrade the forest further and make it vulnerable to wildfires. It's a vicious cycle that could trigger irreversible loss of biodiversity and cultural value turning the Amazon into dry forests and grassland, displacing communities, increasing wildfires, and worsening air pollution. This Amazon tipping point domino effect would also be felt globally. Rainfall would decrease worldwide, impacting agricultural crop productivity and food supplies. Water security would also be threatened, as 20% of our freshwater supply currently flows from the Amazon. And instead of being an ally against the climate crisis, the Amazon would accelerate it, with the death of plants and forest fires releasing up to 75 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere. With this, average annual global temperatures could increase up to 0.2 degrees Celsius, triggering yet another chain reaction of heat waves, droughts, hurricanes, further sea level rise, declines in agricultural productivity, and species loss on land and in water. Not to mention the widespread increase of heat-related illnesses and dangerous vector-borne diseases like malaria and dengue. This is just a glimpse of what could happen if we cross one tipping point. So, how close are we to setting off these catastrophic consequences? Studies suggest that the destruction of 20 to 25% of the Amazon rainforest could tip the scales. 
we've already deforested as much as 17%. The Amazon is just one example. Five other global tipping points are approaching quickly, and each has the potential to trigger another, threatening all species, Earth's life support systems, and society as we know it. What are these tipping points? Melting ice sheets in Greenland and the West Antarctic have the potential to disrupt ocean circulation and cause sea levels to rise several meters. Coral reef die-off could decimate fisheries and impact hundreds of millions of people who depend on reefs for food, livelihoods and storm protection. An ocean circulation tipping point in the Atlantic would devastate marine ecosystems, impact other major ocean currents and change global weather patterns, including more severe winters and intense summer heat waves for the Northern Hemisphere. A permafrost tipping point would unleash contaminants into a water from thawing ground and trigger the sudden release of vast amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Tipping points are alarming, but we know what to do in order to avoid them. We must restore ecosystems and increase their resilience. We need to transform our food and energy systems, which are the main drivers of biodiversity loss and climate change. The flow of finance needs to be redirected away from activities that harm nature towards those that heal. And we must increase support for the communities most affected by our interlinked climate and nature crises. The good news is that the world recognizes the gravity of the situation and the need for change. To date, more than 190 countries have adopted the Sustainable Development Goals, the Paris Climate Agreement and the historic Coming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework. It's clear that there's no shortage of awareness nor ambition, but what we now need is action. Governments, businesses and financial institutions must now follow through on their commitments, urgently stepping up to secure a sustainable future for our planet. As individuals and communities, we too must be more aware of how our choices impact nature and make positive changes whenever we can. We may have placed our planet and ourselves on a dangerous seesaw, but with our collective efforts, nature can bounce back. Playtime is over. It's time to get to work. Our futures depend on it.